Welcome back, everybody, to the Building Lifelong Athletes podcast. I'm your host, Jordan Ranke. Thanks so much for stopping by. Our goal here is to keep you active and healthy for life through actionable and evidence-informed education. That's kind of our main goal. And we finished our testosterone series. This is kind of a bonus episode. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to react to some of the most popular YouTube shorts in terms of looking at testosterone. So what I did was I just typed in testosterone into YouTube and pulled up the most popular ones. I excluded some of them just to family-friendly reasons. I want to keep this G-rated or at least PG-rated if possible. Um, so some of them I did include. But overall, these are some of the biggest influencers on the entire social media game in terms of YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, whatever have you. These are some big big, big names, some people, some not quite as much, but these videos themselves had an enormous amount of views. We're talking multi, multi-million in views between them combined. And so I just want to kind of take a, a moment to react to them say, Hey, as me, as a sports med physician, you know, what am I thinking? How do I think they come across? I want to be clear that I will not be doing any personal attacks today. Anything I talk about today is a content based, you know, idea. It is their thought and their content. I'm not attacking any single person. Uh, I can potentially disagree with an argument, but that doesn't mean I don't like that person. Doesn't necessarily mean I wish them bad or anything like that. Like I said, I think Disagreement is healthy and good for scientific advancement. But like I said, I will not be doing any attacks on anybody. Anybody who puts themselves out there on YouTube is, you know, like I said, putting themselves out there. That's a hard thing to do. So I will not be attacking anybody. This is not attacking anybody's character. I want to be winsome in this approach. And like I said, I understand. I just want to love on people and say, I'm not here to, to start any, any, any fights or anything like that. But I just want to react and kind of give my take. So we'll start with the first one now. What are the health risks that guys should consider if they're thinking about going on TRT? Well, it depends the context in which they enter into that. Because again, if you don't act actually need it and you get on it you could be making yourself less healthy but if you do need it and you're i think it's a great point it looks like here we're talking with more plates more dates and chris will and talking about hey i love the fact that right away he's saying hey if you don't need this i don't recommend you take it and i think that is a vastly understated thing you know most people think more of something is better and that's definitely not the case let's see what he says and you're clinically deficient, and again, not medical advice, but in general, you're going to be more prone to things like cardiovascular disease, neurodegeneration, et cetera. So it's kind of like, if you actually clinically need something to then say, what is the downside to TRT? It's like, what is the downside of not being on TRT at that point, potentially? That's kind of how I would frame it for the actual clinical utility of it in a real deficient setting. It's kind of like, what could you be staving off by using it in a responsible way? Okay. So overall, like I said, I have no big disagreements on this. He's saying that, hey, if you're clinically deficient, then you may benefit from getting on testosterone replacement therapy. And that sounds good to me. And, you know, talking about the endocrine society guidelines, we've talked about that in previous podcasts, that they recommend that, hey, you have clinically low values. You know, like I said, those values range anywhere from 250 to 350, depending on what literature you read, but you have that and symptoms. And they say, yeah, if that's the case and you have these other symptoms, specifically like sexual side effects, then they recommend starting that. And so I, I cannot agree more and that, hey, if you're clinically deficient, then it might make sense to get you back to kind of, you know, upper or kind of normal limits and kind of go from there. But like I said, I think the big thing I really want to emphasize here is if you have no reason to take it, I wouldn't recommend taking that. I recommend that for anything. It's like I said, if you have no reason to take any medication, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, but like, what if you take this? You know, I, that's generally not the recommendation is to just take things for the sake of taking. Same thing with testosterone. It's not a magic pill. So that's great. I love that. That's an awesome way to start. All right, let's go to the next one. This is coming from T Nation. So we'll see what this looks all about. How to boost testosterone naturally. Sleep, that's the biggest one. Make sure you're getting seven to eight hours of sleep per night. All right, starting off strong with sleep. I don't think anybody's gonna disagree with sleep. We did a podcast episode on sleep and everyone's gonna recommend sleep. That's great, love that. Lift weights. Heavy strength training stimulates growth hormone and testosterone production. All right, so we're touching into growth hormone here, which not necessarily related specifically to testosterone. He did say and testosterone at the end there, but lifting weights, as we talked about at nauseam in previous podcasts, lifting weights may or may not increase your testosterone. It does acutely. That's pretty you know, concrete. Nobody's going to fight that. It does lead to an acute spike in testosterone. The question is, does that lead to a chronic increase in testosterone? Not sure. But that being said, so many benefits from resistance training. I'm never going to say don't lift weights. Like that's really good advice. Production. Eat quality calories. I recommend a 40, 30, 30 split of protein, carbs, and fats. And then 40, 30, 30. So he's talking about specific macronutrient breakdown ratios. Um, like I said, eating a healthy dietary pattern, I will always recommend that as well. There's some data showing that if you have a little higher fat in your diet, that may lead to an increase in your testosterone um, versus like a low fat diet. But like I said, I don't think there's any magic split that I'd recommend. I think in general, like I said, the big idea is eating to sustain the body composition you're looking to have. And we want to keep that relatively lean, but like I said body composition will also play a huge role in testosterone. So I agree with that. You know, eating quality calories, that's really important. Vitamin D, 
get outside more or supplement with 5,000 IUs of vitamin D a day. So vitamin D, this is one we didn't specifically cover. Um, vitamin D is a just a whole topic in and of itself. It is super controversial. Some people think it's the most magic thing in the world. This is magic elixir. Other people say it doesn't do anything. It's more of a marker of health status. And so that's the big question is, is vitamin D like a marker of health status? It's like, oh, people who supplement with vitamin D had higher testosterone. It's like, or did like overall they get better and they improve the vitamin D just through naturally not having as many chronic diseases. I don't know. I'm not necessarily sure. I did see some data like that vitamin D supplementation may have increased testosterone for some people. So that has plausibility in it for sure. Um, it's not my lowest hanging fruit, but I think once again, if you're vitamin D insufficient or you know you don't have enough or, or you're deficient, then repleting that's not unreasonable. Like I said, it's kind of going back to that first one. If there's a clinical need, meaning you are like clinically deficient in vitamin D, then yeah, something that might be helpful. Um, but it wouldn't be like my first line of like, hey, this is the biggest thing I need for testosterone. And then have more sex. Humans are animals. We're genetically hardwired to procreate. So and so. Uh, Probably that wouldn't be the way I'd phrase it, but so the argument here is that um, having more sex or ejaculating more leads to elevation in testosterone. And as I kind of quick search looking at those that I've seen previously, doesn't seem to be super tied with um, testosterone and ejaculation. In terms of like testosterone itself doesn't really have, play a role in like the whole ejaculatory pathway. And it doesn't seem that like having going through that process um, leads to a huge increase in testosterone it certainly wouldn't make my like top four or five that's for sure and so that one like i said that one's for um, clicks i'm sure a little bit there but overall though i can't say i disagree with a lot of these you know it talks about exercise sleep nutrition you know plus or minus maybe some supplementation that's not unreasonable so overall here nothing nothing crazy which i'm, I'm super happy to see all right, next we're going to talk about a video here from Doctorpedia YouTube, which had a bunch. This is the three proven ways to increase your testosterone levels. Three proven ways to increase your testosterone levels. Number one, compound muscle exercise. So bench press, squats, deadlifts, push-ups, and pull-ups. Second thing is work out your big muscle groups. So your chest, your back, your quads, as well as your hamstring. Third way, decrease the amount of time between your reps at the gym. So by decreasing that time, it's essentially high-intensity interval training, but make sure you don't overtrain. Doing too much or pushing it too far for too long can decrease your testosterone levels. All right, so short and sweet. I like that one. So we kind of talked about major muscle groups, compound movements, and then uh, inter interval training. So first and foremost, we're talking about what looks like just a lifting perspective here, but it does seem that the more muscles we use during an exercise, the, uh, in, the greater the increase in testosterone acutely. And once again, we talked about this before exercise. It's kind of tricky in that it's not a guarantee that exercising will automatically increase your testosterone. Like I said, I think it's more of a byproduct of what exercise does. It's a part of a, you know, healthy lifestyle. It's kind of like those commercials, like this is a part of a healthy breakfast. Like, well, exercise and lifting is a part of a healthy lifestyle. And in living a healthy lifestyle, that will raise your testosterone. There is data showing that you will acutely spike testosterone, right? So when you do big movements like squats and deadlifts and bench press, like I mentioned, that you will have these spikes in testosterone, but they usually come down within a couple of hours to a couple of days. And so it's not necessarily leading to that long-term chronic change, but there are some data showing that, hey, the more muscle you use, the greater response that is. And that's actually, I think, true because they looked at other studies like, you know, you're isolating biceps, just doing biceps curls, even to like failure. That doesn't seem to produce really an elevated testosterone response, whereas big exercises do. And at the end, he talks about like, you know, functional fitness or in higher intensity interval training. Um, that's just kind of fatigue, right? So the more fatigue you put on the body, you know, that seems to bring out the testosterone response. Essentially what we're doing is we need to fatigue and stress our body. That's really what it comes down to. Like when we're doing big compound movements, you know, we talked about doing those movements. Well, if you do those and you're just repping things out, there's no issue at all whatsoever. Well, then that's not going to be a big issue. Like that's not going to boost your testosterone. It's the struggle, right? So it's getting that RP up there towards that six, seven, eight, nine area where we're having a difficult time with our activities. It's really, really struggling and challenging yourself. It's kind of that stimulus that responds and creates that increase in testosterone. And the only way to get that high of a stimulus is through compound movements. And so that's what I agree with. And then on the other spectrum, I think it's really important to talk about, we don't work out too much. I, for most people, that's not an issue. So like, if you're just like, Oh, I don't work out too much. Like calm down. If you're just starting to work out, that's not going to happen. But there are people who are doing, you know, 14 sessions a week, meaning two a day, seven days a week. And if you do go on that tail end, there's kind of that overtraining side that can lead to a decrease in testosterone. Like I said, that is usually a whole separate problem. The vast, vast, vast majority of people of the, in the American public are not having anywhere close to that. I want people to get physically active enough. I'm not trying to discourage them from working out too much. So I do like that he mentioned that for completeness, but like I said, most people, that's not my biggest concern. All right, next one, we are looking at 
Alpha M, and the title is Stop Killing Your Testosterone Levels. So, let's see what he's talking about. You want your testosterone to be as high? I need to turn that down. I did not expect that as bringing the noise. All right, I respect that, but holy cow. All right. As possible as a man, you need to avoid these two things. The hops that they use to make beer is actually a phytoestrogen. Phytoestrogen is a plant-based estrogen. When you consume it, your estrogen level rises and your testosterone level decreases. Drink all right, so this is a common one people talk about all the time in terms of hops. This is interesting. I heard talk about hops and alcohol. Um, usually people talk about soy, soy being a phytoestrogen and all that. So phytoestrogen, it is a essentially yeah, a plant version of a, a, a similar shape to estrogen. So it has the same chemical structure similarly to estrogen, yeah, but it's plant-based. And obviously when you do that, their concern is like, well, if I consume that, is my estrogen going to go up as well? And there's actually been quite a few studies showing that if you increase your know, soy specifically, if you take that in, it doesn't seem to elevate your estrogen or decrease your testosterone necessarily on aggregate. That being said, there are case reports, people consuming massive amounts of soy, like people drinking like three liters of soy milk every day and having, you know, gotten comastia and elevated estrogen. So it is possible. Like I said, the vast majority of time, it's people on like this side of the bell curve, right? If you think about this big bell curve here, if you're just chilling in the middle, eating like an average amount of you know, soy or drinking a modest amount of alcohol, like you're probably not going to do enough where you're going to send yourself into having elevated estrogen, but everyone's different. And so data kind of represents the average, but then average, it doesn't seem like that's going to do much of anything, but like I said, your mileage may vary um, from an alcohol perspective. There are other reasons not to consume alcohol. Like I said, there's no, there's no real, like there's not a ton of health promoting benefits of alcohol. Obviously it's very social in just culture and society and so that so that's the thing but like i said my number one reason for not drinking alcohol wouldn't necessarily be that i'm super worried about estrogen going up um, unless you're drinking massive amounts well then that's a whole other host of issues but like i said um the idea behind phytoestrogens increasing estrogen uh, i just want to the point i want to make is like it's not one-to-one -one, that's for sure and that like that's not my biggest thing like you said if you i'm checking your lifestyle like if you're not sleeping well if you're not exercising you're not eating well and like all those different things are going on like those are the big rocks like i'm not gonna be like well, but like, did you eat a phytoestrogen? Like, I don't think that's, you know, the lowest hanging piece of fruit. But like I said, uh, mechanistically, I understand where that comes from, but it just doesn't seem to be like the biggest concern for me. Out of plastics containing BPA, which is a chemical known as an EDC. EDC stands for endocrine disrupting chemical. When they make the plastic, it's in there. It leaches into whatever you're drinking. You drink it and your testosterone level plummets. Guys, if you want to be healthier, limit the beer and also make sure you're drinking out of metal or glass. Okay. And so this is one like kind of going into the realm of environmental exposures. And this has kind of been more of a hot topic recently as we've learned more. And yeah, EDCs, uh, endocrine disrupting chemicals are a real thing. Absolutely. Bisphenol A is, is one of them. And it is kind of like that has estrogenic components and it actually does seem to have a decrease in testosterone when you consume lots of those. Well, you know, single use plastics can have those at times. Like I said, they're starting to move away from a lot of different things. But overall, I think this is like a general fair thing to say um, like i said it's not merely the biggest thing in terms of you know the big rocks i talk about but it definitely could be i mean if you're you know, drinking tons of water a day that can definitely happen but like i said i think and it's anchoring disrupting chemicals specifically bisphenol a that there is some truth of that that can decrease your testosterone and so that's something to consider like if you're really looking to optimize everything that'd be something that you can think about all right the next video is kino body and I'm talking about five signs you have low testosterone clear-cut signs you have a low testosterone. First sign that your testosterone levels are lower, you typically wake up without an erection. That's a bad sign. Um, so first thing he talks about is not having a morning erection. And that can be a sign of low testosterone for sure. Like I said, most of these things are not guaranteed, meaning if you have this, you have low testosterone. Um, but that is one where it's definitely linked to low testosterone. Um, like I said, the biggest things I care about, and we'll talk about more this here, uh, or anything related to sexual side effects, that's something we think about that your T levels probably lower, you don't have a high sex drive. Okay, so once again, libido here, that is a classic one. So if you have a low libido, lower than it previously was, or you care for it to be, that is definitely one where if someone comes to my office and says like, hey, Dr. Reddy, I'm, I, I really don't have much of a libido and they have, you know, everything else seems to be relatively normal and there's no other, you know, psychosocial situations going on, then that would definitely make me think, hmm, is this a sign of low testosterone? So that's reasonable people that have very high testosterone naturally. Effort feels good. You want to push yourself. You want to train hard. You're more drawn to lifting heavy. You're more drawn to competitive sports. Fourth. Um, okay, so the idea that you want to exert yourself, this is what we're getting into kind of the more subjective ones. You know, there are in different papers, they kind of talk about things that have a higher 
um, relationship or correlation with low testosterone. And they, they find that the sexual side effects tend to have a higher correlation. So things like the low libido and, you know, no morning erections, like those are ones that are like, oh, those are pretty, like, if that's the case, if you're like, you know, the, the looks like the demographic here is going to be, you know, 20s to 30s to 40s. So young, young guys. But so if you're in that demographic and you're not having those things, then yeah, that's definitely like, okay, that's concerning. Whereas starting to get here, like wanting to compete, like that's starting to get a little too, a little more subjective for me. Whereas if someone's like, oh yeah, I just like, I don't know, I don't love lifting or I don't love competing. And like, to me, I'm not gonna be like, oh, you have a low testosterone. That's like the, where my brain jumps to first. There's so many things that could be happening in terms of psychosocial interactions. Like, did they, were they, raised in a competitive household or area like maybe that's just not part of their culture um also in terms of some of the most insane athletes you know of there's studies of olympic athletes who have super 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 low testosterone because they train so much and like i said their testosterone is low um or even low naturally and they're just elite and so like, this is not one where i'm gonna be like oh that like that's not gonna make my checklist of like hey do you want to give effort like this is probably not one that's gonna make my like checklist meaning you know this is specific enough for low testosterone but interesting thought when you start to put on muscle, the muscle comes on easily. And when you lean down, you actually maintain good muscular size. Interesting. So putting on muscle easily. So that's like a sign you have good testosterone. Um, I don't necessarily know how true that is in terms of, I guess I haven't seen any direct studies on that. So I could be, I could be not read on that. That's for sure. But I think there's a wide range of testosterone levels you can have to build muscle. And I don't think it's like, Hey, people on the upper limit of testosterone build better. Obviously, if you are on super physiologic ranges of testosterone, then yeah, you're going to put on muscle really well because that's what it does. But like I said, within that normal range, I think there's a wide, wide variance. And like I said, it doesn't, to me, I don't, I haven't seen data saying that, hey, if you're on the higher end, like that's going to lead to better muscle. Um, but like I said, interesting idea as well. I have another theory. Guys that have thicker necks typically are going to have higher free testosterone. As a man, your upper chest, shoulders, traps have a high density of androgen receptors. If you have higher testosterone, you're naturally going to have a thicker neck. Okay, so that is the first time I've ever heard that, that uh, if you have high testosterone, you have a thicker neck. And as someone who has a big neck, cool, man, that's great. No, um, but I just don't see the mechanistic plausibility behind this one. If anything, if anything, I'm like worried, like when people have too big of necks, cause then it's like, okay, is that gonna lead to sleep apnea, which sleep apnea we know has a significant decrease in testosterone can lead to a decreasing testosterone. So that's like where I'm concerned about. So, um, like I said, I think this one is probably, uh, the one that's probably the least studied I'd imagine. And, uh, we're probably not going to find too much on the data there, but it's an interesting idea, um, in terms of androgen receptor that I have to look into that. But overall, like I said, I, I don't see someone with a thick neck and think like you have low testosterone or you have high testosterone. I think, oh shoot, like, do you have sleep apnea? And that could lead to the opposite meaning too low of testosterone. So interesting one for sure. All right. So next we're moving on to, it looks like, uh, Dr. Malik here and seeing how to boost your testosterone naturally. Oh, it's gonna be a dancing one here. So, okay. So signs of low testosterone, low libido, low energy, difficulty concentrating, losing muscle mass. Um, which yeah, all those things sound, those are signs you could have that low libido, like she mentioned. I think they, uh, she's a urologist. Um, I've seen some of her videos that she has some really great stuff, but yeah, like low libido, like, so that's gonna be a big one here. You know, the concentration that's kind of hit or miss stuff. It could be, um, but like I said, if you have low libido, like it's pretty much like a woman would take it, like we'll probably check her testosterone because that's pretty reasonable. So the next thing here is that for people who are listening to audio only talks about five things you can do naturally to boost your testosterone. Talks about number one is lose weight. Number two, resistance training. Number three, sleep for more than seven hours. Four, reduce your alcohol intake. And five, avoid BPAs like plastic containers and bottles. So overall, man, that was that was masterclass in the things you look for. You know, we talked about losing weight eating well, sleeping well, and avoiding alcohol and, you know, endocrine disrupting chemicals. Like that was, that's it in terms of, there's some big rocks there. I'm all about the big rocks, right? Control what you can control and focus on the big things and talked about sleep and nutrition and body composition. Like that's so important. Like I said, if I had to say the number one most important thing for having a normal testosterone level, it's maintaining a healthy body composition. Because I really think that's it. Because a lot of times if we increase adiposity, we start to, you know, have more aromatase activity, which aromatase takes testosterone to estrogen. And that seems to be like the strongest correlation I've seen with low testosterone is people who have um, obesity or a, a high, higher elevated BMI. So I like that. Like I said, these are big rocks. There's no nonsense there, no fluff. None of that's really sexy, like working out and maintaining a healthy body composition. There's no tricks. And I, I respect that. I think when someone, I would really like about that is when someone tells you, um, you know, that you have to put in work and that things are challenging and this is, there's no gimmicks. Like I, 
will tend to my ears perk up because like oh okay this is someone like i might be able to to know like and trust and uh just in terms of hey i think there's stuff and i think i've seen some rather stuff as well i think she's very reasonable in that i don't see any sensationalist things and i think she does a good job of kind of bringing evidence-based medicine so overall i love that dr malik uh great work and now the last one to talk about here is from hybrid calisthenics this was the number one overall most popular youtube short for testosterone so like i said that's pretty there's millions and millions of users almost over a half a million likes just as it is so this is like i said this is getting into the culture and the reason i do this is because these ideas you know whether they're evidence-based or not they are getting into the culture and that's the, the important is people are seeing these on their feeds whether it's instagram or tiktok or youtube shorts people are seeing these and this these ideas become permeated into people and so i just want to see you know what kind of things are we seeing just just kind of get my thought on so this is the last one here we'll see what this looks like a good level of testosterone, my friend, can help keep you healthy, fit, and strong. You don't need to take supplements, drugs, or steroids. There's plenty you can do right from home. Uh, I love the chainsaw in the background. I think it just adds to the chic of it. But so far, I love it. He's saying, hey, there's, you know, you don't need to take any steroids. There's plenty of things you can do at home. And like I said, I, I agree. At first things first, like you, I love that. I agree with that. Like, unless you are clinically deficient in testosterone and the things we've talked about otherwise, like have a clinically low level with symptoms, like sexual side effect symptoms, um, we have to don't even start thinking about taking TRT yet. Firstly, we have to train hard. There's some debate as to why intense exercise increases testosterone, but thankfully, almost everyone agrees that it does. Movements that really make you struggle, like squats, are especially effective. If you make your body think that it's a struggle to survive, it'll give you the tools to be strong and muscular. Okay, we had it going for a while that I love that. So overall, I love that though. Exercise, we talked about. That's great. We think it's great. Large compound movements, really fantastic. At the end, like struggling, yeah, we want to get to that point of struggle. We talked about that. It's important to push yourself and that's what kind of produces those acute spikes in testosterone. Um, the whole like confusing, tricking your body into thinking is so I don't necessarily know if that's if that's it. That's coming from more of the uh, evolutionary biology mindset and there's just no way to prove that. Um, but either way, I think exercise using large compound movements, good advice. But if you tell your body that you'd like to sit around and watch Netflix all day, your body will gift you some nice cushioning around your belly so you can be comfortable while you do that. Okay. And so what the i don't love the the tone in terms of like hey if you just like tell your body it's like it's like the whole like back in the day say like muscle confusion like you know keep your body confused like that doesn't, that's not a thing like but what he's getting at here is if you are more active you are having a less chance a less you know you're gonna be less likely to have increased adiposity and obesity and those things and so just sitting around does increase your risk of having just because you're decreasing the amount of calories you're you know, burning off every single day. And so, and then we know that having increased adipose tissue does decrease your testosterone. So, um, roundabout way that is correct. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with your body knowing that it's, you know, not being stimulated other than your body just kind of responds to the things you do. Getting fat isn't a bug. It's a feature. Even if we train hard though, we have to sleep hard. REM sleep is when we produce the most testosterone. So to really maximize this, we want to sleep long and deep. It usually helps you to keep your bedroom dark and quiet. Also lab Ooh, because I love that. So great. So talking about sleep and spot on. Yeah, when we get into that REM sleep, that's typically when we start to see an association with elevated testosterone, meaning we tend to see a increased spike in testosterone around that REM sleep, which is our deep sleep. And there's a bunch of studies looking at sleep and testosterone does look like the less you sleep, the lower your testosterone. But the question is, is it actual duration or is it quality of your sleep? And it does look like we need to get to that deep sleep to really get restorative um, sleep in terms of testosterone. And it usually takes about 90 ish or so minutes to replete testosterone, which kind of coincides with getting into that deep REM cycle. So I do agree with that, that, Hey, once we get into those deep sleeps, um, that's where we're going to have an increase in testosterone, uh, at least the values has been shown to improve sleep quality. This next one is a little bit more controversial. Some studies have shown that eating cholesterol-heavy foods may boost testosterone in some people. But not every study shows this. Yeah, y'all are not going to like this next one. Okay, so he was talking about lavender says sleep here. Well, kind of, yeah, that's, if, if you want to, that's great. Like I said, I don't think it's a big rock, but sleep hygiene in general, super, super important. We, uh, in terms of getting the bedroom dark, we want to have a routine, limit screens, all the things I love with. And then talk about diet, we have talked about before. There are some studies showing that an increased fat diet in terms of increased fat percentage may lead to an increase in testosterone. Uh, it's not slam dunk, but like he mentioned, I love the fact that he mentioned not all the studies show that. I think that shows a lot of humility and I really respect that. And yeah, it's not guaranteed, that's for sure. Drinking alcohol, smoking, and most drugs will interfere with your testosterone. But I'm not telling you what to do, that's up to you. Have a beautiful day. Yeah, so yeah, it seems like tobacco is pretty much never a good idea. Um, 
I just can't really recommend using tobacco products for anything. And then alcohol, like I said, it's obviously much more than just from a health perspective. It's a so- social thing. So that's great. But overall, I just love the vibe on this. He was just, you know, like, hey, this is what uh, this is what you can do. You can look for. Overall, I agree. And there's nothing huge here that I saw that I was like, no, I need that. The only thing I'd say is maybe the fats in terms of, you know, he's showing pictures of animal fats. And it's not necessarily that we have to have just animal fats. People will say that in the internet that you need animal fats to have increased your testosterone. And I think overall, just fats in general will probably do the trick. But overall, like I said, love the vibe. He's just saying, hey, exercise, sleep, eat well. Like I said, all the big things. And that's kind of the take home point here. And you said, well, we'll wrap things up. But overall, time and time and time again, you will see people talk about crazy things and there's a reason i kind of like picked these and then i thought they're all relatively reasonable some of them are more in incendiary than others and kind of more clickbaity but overall like i just want to continue to harp on the theme that like focus on the big things right if you can control you can control like that's that's going to be great big things sleep exercise nutrition body composition for testosterone like these are the play like there are no other plays like if one of those things is not locked in then like i'm going to continue route you back to that and people will get distracted you know shiny object syndrome saying oh like what about this what about that and i'll be like no my job is to pull you back and say these things focus on these things because one i think they, they're the most important i think they have the biggest bang for your buck is just focusing on the big rocks things like sleep nutrition exercise and body composition, like those are the big things and anything else is typically distraction. However, if those are all locked in, those are perfect and we're still not where we wanna be, then yes, we can absolutely start going down and kind of looking down the wormhole and say, hey, what are the things, where can we optimize things? But most people find this thing over here and say, I want this and because it's a distraction and it's easier Maybe it's a pill or a supplement or a hack that someone says online. Like at the end of the day, if someone's selling you a hack, they're selling you a hack for a reason. And there's a reason that not everybody does it because it doesn't work usually. So I will always say, hey, like big things are big things. That's what I really care about. And so I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer by any means. But like I said, I just believe so strongly in that if you focus on just a few really, really important things that it will just produce you enormous benefits. Like I said, just just multiply the effects of those things. So that's really where we can go from there. But I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks so much for following along. Um, like I said, if you did like this, I'd appreciate it. If you could like or comment, that'd mean a lot or sign up for my newsletter. I just email when I kind of put a new podcast up or a video anything like that. Never going to spam you. I hate spam, but hope you like this new comment. If you enjoyed this kind of me reacting or you have other ideas, let me know. Like I appreciate the feedback, but thanks so much for stopping by. Now get off your phone, get outside and have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time.